it. But we got to do our redemption segment, people. This is our redemption segment. Or was it really that bad? The answer is yes. We're talking about Noah. <laughs> this is 2013. Jesus. Okay, we're off to a slow start. All right, this is 2014. This is Noah. This is Darren Aronofsky. Or as we like to call awesome it, director. Lord of the Rings, Until... the biblical addiction. Oh my That's God. right. I actually... I actually you insult had Lord no of the Rings, Dave. idea. <laughs> Fuck Lord of the Rings. Guys, I had no idea Helm's Deep. Guys, I had no idea Helm's Deep was based off a true story. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, please so we're talking continue. about Noah. Please people. continue. Did you so, just say a written and directed true story? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I, guys, that's just for the, so everybody on the that's for you, John. Just so everybody knows, listening to this podcast or all of the several people watching us on Twitch, I reread this section of the Bible because it was two pages long. So it took me all of five minutes. I true story. story. He story sent it Noah. to us. He actually whipped his Bible out just, just yeah. so we I can really out. talk yeah, some I, good I, shit about this movie. Guys, I took in I took in the good word. And um, I don't know if you knew this, but um, uh everybody in this story was at least 100 years old <laughs> some, no of them were, some of them were also 900 hundreds hundreds yeah, some of them also, were 900 years they, old. also i'm gonna go ahead and say this because i know the bible was written by men and it wasn't actually written by the creator the bible's really sexist man eve is the only woman sexist that they mentioned by name fuck dude it is literally they mentioned okay, these wait, 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 twenty wait, wait, times wait, wait. and eventually just we're, mentioned their okay sorry we we're, can't get into yeah, no, we're, we're talking we're talking about noah a fictional movie based on okay, right. questionable so, source material. All right. Dave, 5,000 years ago, the Earth was created. All right, so here we go. We got Darren Aronofsky. Shut the fuck up. Shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Co-wrote with Ari Handel. Directed by Darren Aronofsky. Starring Russell Crowe as Noah. This is right after Les Mis, pretty much. And it was right before he said, fuck it, I need a break. <laughs> This yeah, movie it's, it's, it's right after his lame his apology to her. You would, you would think you would think any movie with Russell Crowe, Academy Award winner, Academy Award winner Jennifer Connelly, who is just the apple of everybody's eye, and Academy Award winner Anthony Hopkins, starring future stars Logan Lerman, current but also young star Emma Watson, Douglas Booth is a good actor, Ray Winstone good actor. You think, you think this movie <laughs> would have legs? Let's read the description, shall we? Why would you Noah, think that? <laughs> <laughs> John. <laughs> Noah is chosen by God to undertake a momentous mission before an apocalyptic flood cleanses the world. Now, I want to be very clear about one thing. This movie had a $125 million budget. That is something that you cannot get out wow. of your head. Somebody gave this guy a $125 million budget. It actually made over $300 million. So it technically... Okay, I want to I want to stop you for a second. Uh, just, just quickly. Um, it's... Uh, you know how he got that budget? And this is actually a really clever little thing. Um, he released the graphic novel of the film. And released the graphic novel of the film in this current version. Like of what Noah turned out to be. That That's how he got $100 million? That's, yeah. It, he made a comic book and released it under the world. And people read the Noah comic but book. Uh, written the by him. The comic book made a hundred yeah. million dollars. No, the comic book didn't. But the comic book gave him a fan base that he could take to a studio and go. This already has a fan base. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. Yeah. He, he, he made time. his. So he made his go. own fucking fan base. <laughs> so. I'm trying to share some decent so news I, with you. You, like, you just fucking shit. So on we it. are a positive. We are a positive film criticism podcast. I saw this movie in theaters and I can't believe we had to see this again. Okay, so this has a five point seven. On, God damn it. This has a 5.7 on IMDb, so not great. I go over to Rotten Tomatoes. Now, this might be the biggest travesty of all of this whole thing. Rotten Tomatoes. We're talking about Noah, people. We're talking about Noah. We're talking about Noah here. 76% tomato meter. This movie has 76%. Now, to be fair, some of those positive reviews include, I didn't hate it. Apparently, that's considered a positive <laughs> review. But other people talked about the visual spectacle, and I'm gonna be go. I'm gonna go ahead and be fair. Yes, the visual yeah. spectacle. There were some great looking images in this story. As far as the movie itself, this movie is 110% certifiable 
absolutely a piece of absolute dog shit. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Give a, oh, hold the buzzer down. Hold the buzzer down, dude. Good God Almighty! This movie, I'd, seen, I'd seen this movie before. <laughs> The, the rock monsters wow. are stupid. The dogs are ugly. The story's a lie. Not no, no I'm not talking about the Bible. They <laughs> doesn't the matter. Dude, is, keep buzzing them, dude. Keep buzzing them. You gotta keep drinking, stop, motherfucker. Stop. They lied. All the boys had wives, and they they take the wives away from them, which really backfires when the arc is is done, and then there's just two twin girls and no males. So you know who's gonna procreate the earth? Uncles and nieces. Like really backfires if you well, think about it. In Alabama. They had wives in the story. Just give them wives. Yeah. Ray Winstone's oh, character is just an average blacksmith in the movie. We're deep and yet we field an army of 700,000 people like nothing about this movie makes any goddamn sense <laughs> let alone witchcraft and wizardry that's behind Holy it's yo. so uh, how Jeff, did it it's staying there get out the script phase it's, staying there there you go. it's almost like a I can't think it's just like a callback to you know like the early Hollywood like these biblical epics were popular at one point and I can't the understand. Ten Commandments actually sticks to the Bible they took so many deviations in this at some point you say what are the deviations for and I, I'm not sitting here as a Bible purist or anything, but it's like, why are you doing this? Why are there rock monsters building the ark? There are, if for those of you who hadn't seen this movie and for some reason are still listening to this podcast, there are <laughs> rock monsters building the ark. They are, okay, so there were fallen angels called the watchers in Genesis, <laughs> but, but they're not, why are they building this ark? Why are you doing that? And if you want to do that because it looks cool or whatever, okay, but then all of a sudden you literally have a battle where hundreds of that, like over the ark, why are you doing this? The answer is they are fucking the story of Noah over to make money for it to be awesome. That's it. They are rat fucking the story of Noah. Profit. And, and, and which it, is already, not... which is already a bullshit fable. Like what well, I keep let us see the bullshit way. fable. That's for John. Why? Take no, on that don't challenge. Me... No, don't. How do you make Aquaman Ryan. real? How do you make Aquaman real? I don't know. Just fucking show us Aquaman. But you can't sit there and be like, the Noah story is boring. So let's take away the wives. Let's make this guy, this uncle guy important. Let's have some rock monsters. See, I just want to believe. Let's have I just Anthony believe. Hopkins is a sorcerer. Like, it's all, come on. I just want to believe that the guy who made Pi, Requiem for a Dream, The Fountain, The Wrestler, and Black Swan, back to back, had some other story ideas. I don't understand w w why he did this. Even Mother, that was more recently in 2017, at least it was original. At least, at least he was doing something. He upset a lot of people. And it's a very controversial movie, and I'm not saying that that was a success. But I this mean, one just not. I don't understand. Noah upset why a lot of people to too. This. Like I the, know, but yeah, but <laughs> Noah said that but Noah was a gold miner. He just dug for gold. Also, Noah was an asshole. <laughs> Story, they literally said they literally said the reason Noah gets to procreate is because he's the only person on earth who's good. And so if you as the filmmaker sit there and go, that's kind of boring. Let's make oh Noah shitty. Immediately you should say, wait a second, I shouldn't tell the story of Noah. <laughs> if you sit there yeah, and, and the Bible says yes. Noah's good. Noah's good. We're gonna procreate the rest of the world with Noah and Noah alone because he's good. And you as the filmmaker go, but what if Noah sucks? And it's like, then tell it that's tell a different story. This it doesn't make any I sense. I also I also didn't appreciate all right. Sorry, I'm burping. There were a few different aspects technically that I really disliked and that I really liked. There are three, I think there are three, very quick cut um where it shows like where the water flows and it shows some time pass and it's yeah, fucking it very awesome. tree of life very malic yeah. yeah 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 exactly there are some really amazing and they're all practical and it shows like actual such cut together really quickly to show the passing of time there are some few elements like that that are really interesting but overall i remember just thinking very consciously this is the second time i've tried to watch this movie i remember after jeff told me his story about falling asleep i was like no way it's that bad i'm gonna give it a shot I sat down and I didn't even make it through. And I never turn movies off. So I was struggling with it anyway. And then the movie wasn't good and I turned it off. So this is the first time I've seen it all the way through. But I remember thinking this time, one thing that makes this movie unnecessarily worse is that he did not set it in a realistic setting. I understand there were the, the people had taken over everything and he wanted consider, to show like a very the words landscape. you just used. 
a realistic setting. I know, I know, I know. But there are places on planet Earth where he could have practically shot and not used that fucking color, you know, palette that he was using that was projected onto everything and it was all fake. None of that was, none of that felt real. It didn't even feel like Earth. I think if it was set in I mean, a more the realistic funniest tone, thing is, if you, uh, if you look at the, all the interviews with uh, Matthew Libertyk, who was the cinematographer a lot of that all of that was captured in camera they did very little color where were they were they on like the i was i knew it was iceland dude i was about to say i knew it was fucking iceland i knew they were fucking in iceland which is like give me a fucking break go to fucking the areas of old mesopotamia where there's not a lot of jungle growth go show me what it would look like for that area to be barren probably not there were so many there I know, but come on. There were so many realistic elements that they chose to height. They're, they're probably their words heighten by trying to change the way that they were captured. And it didn't, I don't think it did the film any favors. I felt like it stuck me into a fantasy. And if the whole point was for this to bring the story of Noah to life, why would you present it as a fantasy? I, I didn't understand that. It kept pulling me out of it. I never felt grounded in anything. It all felt so fake to me. Not to mention... I cannot believe Jennifer Connelly and every woman alive back then had to think that only men spoke to God. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? She was just sitting around for her husband to hear the word of the Lord. Oh my God. It made me want to scream. It just took me back to Sunday school, dude. I was going insane. It's it's funny how many people were like, I, I, in doing the research, which Dave and I always have the same notes, I'm sure he saw this, that people say, Emma Watson's character didn't exist in the Bible. Yeah, and my no. answer is, yeah, it did. They said, they're wives. That's where all the women were. And also, <laughs> only one of them oh, had a wife. Also, in the Bible, dude. they were all 100 years old, and there was definitely a 14-year-old boy in this movie. But we forget about that kind of, no, it was not 600 years old. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, Noah was not six hundred years old. No, he was also, probably six hundred. How does that months, even? How so. does that even make? How does that even make sense? Did they? Did they know what years were in the tenth generation of humans? And and they talk about eighteen inches. They're already doing. Okay, you can't even get into that kind of stuff. One of my questions was, does the ark actually float? And these two motherfuckers got mad at me for even asking that question. The ark doesn't float. <laughs> my roof gets a my roof gets a leak, and we've had five thousand years of evolution to get us to this roof that leaks. And this fucking ark was built with tree trunks and no emolument or anything and all of a sudden there's just like whatever. it's the stupidest just, story i've ever heard i remember even as a kid being like bullshit and when they were first heard this as a child i kind of liked it as like, a, i kind of liked it as a kid i, I didn't think about how Come fucked on. up it was that they just murdered every all these fucking humans. animal God, no no God. noah story has been told well the fantasia 2000 donald ducks noah do you remember that with pomp and circumstance, anybody? Yes. Give me your Fantasia 2000 fans. Even that sucked. It's the worst one in the yeah, whole Fantasia no, 2000. No, fuck Fantasia 2000. Oh, come on. There's some there's Original some Fantasia some, there's some all the way, Fantasia motherfucker. Fantasia. Sure, sure, sure. But there's some good Fantasia ones. Even, it's just not Dave. a strong story. I don't know. It feels manipulative. Dave, Dave, it's definitely manipulative. Dave, what's your favorite part of this movie? I love this whole movie. Get Shut the, the fuck out I thought it was here. great. I thought it was oh, great. You did so. not. I mean, get the, out of the here. only comedy. Wait, what are you doing? To like, us right the only now? the only comedy note I had was that poor kid had to sit through the entire fucking begat section at the beginning. There you when go. He, he, <laughs> fucking <laughs> asshole. And, fucking but no, asshole. and also, why was the villain at the beginning the giving speeches section? away from the camera? But like, the Speaking whole of the begat section. No, no, shut up. The whole thing was uh, <laughs> was. Like I was able to separate because I I'm I'm guessing that you guys have some issues here with the the the, the original story, um and the religious notation of it or whatever. But I I'm actually I, okay with the original I, story. I came yes, in yeah. I came in with I was like I'm watching a film I'm gonna watch this film and see what happens. Russ was amazing, and I'm not just saying that so he doesn't want to fight me. Um, the uh. I feel like the backgrounds in this film are as interesting to watch as everything else because, like, for the whole first, like, three quarters of the movie, you can see the fucking heavens in the background. Like, there's all this... Like, the background is as interesting as the foreground in this in this film. Like, the way it's shot, the stylized version of it, I the story of the angels um, becoming the rock monsters, I really dug. I, I thought it was great. I thought it, like... There was, and they, they did show it. 
They showed what happened. They had an explanation behind it. Everything was there in the story. Dave just told us he voted for Trump because he votes for his own self-interest. Like, I've never <laughs> just that Dave. Oh, my God, dude. Come on. No, I, I, it's, it's one of the Dave, it's one of those where it's like, in development, everything works. Like, dude, if we no, were in our pre-production a, and we were talking a, about it. It's a, like, it's a fantastical, it it's a fantastical telling of a story that's, I feel like it's worthy of the source material. Like it, it, it transcends the source material because there's like the whole segment where they go into where he's going to, I'm going to tell you a story and he tells the story of Genesis, but he's telling the story of Genesis as it's quoted in the source material. And, but the imagery that you presented with is the scientific explanation of Genesis, like the big bang the only... and man ascending from apes. There are a few, like there are like, a few, that there was, are that a few was moments. Cool. That was pretty cool. There are that a few was... moments where Darren Aronofsky. Okay. All right. Yeah. I wanted to, I, I mean, up. I just want to remind everyone we're moments... a film podcast, not a Bible podcast. As far as I'm concerned, on like from a film perspective, they nailed this shit. Dave. Dave, buzz. The story is terrible. Sometimes you actually talk about the story. You're, you're talking you about the can't imagery, buzz me because I disagree with you. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. There are a few moments where Darren Aronofsky uses. It's not science. They don't know what science is, but I know what you mean. They use like more they think they tangible like they explanations. And like a, well, they use more they tangible a a applications and, and explanations for a modern audience to look back and say that's what it was. Um, I like that Methuselah made him trip to see the vision of God. That was the medicine cool. yeah. always tastes bad. I don't know if you guys knew that. It's when the mushrooms Which, kicked you know in. What? He realized at he the very beginning are. of this movie, at the very beginning of this movie, when Noah sees the flower bloom, they're wandering around on these plains. He was definitely eating some fucking something, and he For definitely sure. saw that shit. Doesn't matter. My point is that I don't think he leaned into that enough. He tiptoed with it, and then he abandoned it and went full on God fantasy. Where no. the Lord and Savior Creator was I speaking to disagree. him from the heavens, like oh my God, dude, he literally he had conversations with God, like he was like looking into the clouds, like yeah, he did, granted he was, but like that was that was necessary in my opinion to the story, like he had conversations where he, he wasn't answered. And, sure, and you, it wasn't, you, it wasn't wait, answered. you bought you bought but, the whole thing where man needed to be extinct, and Noah was on board with that. Man needs to be extinct again. Are you kidding me? We fucked it up. That's Why a beautiful it, uh, theme. We fucked That's a beautiful what theme. Up, you know what I mean? Like, you made that comment though about the, did it were it was worthy of the subject matter. I I know what you mean, and I I, I wish I agree with you. Like, but have you heard we, the back? Have you heard the backstory of this film as well with what the studio did? They they took it away and they made three independent cuts of this film, and they showed it to Christian audiences to try no, because I, they were nervous because they were no, they were nervous about how it would be, would be received. And Dave, you can't say we're not a Bible podcast and get mad at us for talking about the source material. Now here you are talking about the cuts of pre-production and all this. No, stuff. this is a legitimate story. Um, they, no, I know they it's a took, real story, they, but no, you but, can't like the movie because of the way it was released. No, test screen. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Let me point? finish the, the damn story, yeah, Jeff. Tell the story. Yeah, yeah, tell have the story. a drink tell while I'm story. talking. Uh, okay. Um, basically, they made three cuts of this thing and test screened it with a, a like a Christian audience to see if they would be offended because the studio was nervous. And, of course, every single right. version of it offended them. And then they yeah. didn't tell Aaron he was going to... They didn't tell him he was gonna do, they were going to do that. They did what? it without his permission, yes. And he found out Studios and he was fucking furious. Of course he was furious. And he was fu- like, yeah, no, he was fuck furious. you. The version I make is coming out. And he released it. And I, I'm to be honest, I don't know what the critical reception from that same camp was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't good. Um... But it wasn't like, good. It wasn't as far strong. as sticking to your guns, it's like he made the movie he wanted to make, and that is like that is the reason why Scott Pilgrim is one of my favorite movies ever, and it's the reason why I'm giving this film a break. It's because he made the story he wanted to make, and right down to simple details like the angels being rock monsters, where like they've become infused with the earth. And the way they're animated by the effects guys is every single movement looks like it hurts. And like simple little attention to detail and stuff like that is the reason why I'm calling this a fucking fantastic film. Fantastic. I, I don't know if it's a fantastic, fantastic film. I feel like the film. I think the problem is it's not just the, it's not the only problem, but you did make that comment earlier about worthy of the source material. We've we've alluded to Lord of the Rings. 
and we've said before when we tackle Lord of the Rings on our franchise face off that that source material is so brilliant that it wasn't director proof or actor proof or anything like that, but it almost is. It, it, it's so strong. So I feel like let's make a compromise. I think the problem with this movie is that every single human on planet Earth is aware of Noah in the flood. So there's too much, maybe there's too much of me that I am bringing to my experience. And I don't know if I make room for his own personal creative influence. I don't know if my own prejudice against the Bible and the Torah and the Old Testament has a problem with it. But there's basically, there's basically nothing that he could show me that is going to make me think it was worth his time to make this movie when he's so brilliant. And that's the thing that it just keeps confusing me. I don't understand why he made this movie. Why did he go from those five movies back to back? And in between there, I think he made One Strange Rock. He produced that really wonderful docu-series on I mean, Planet Earth. Some, sometimes the story this, just pops just out at you. Quite... And it's like, I can, I can make my version of this. I have a clear vision. And I'm going to make that vision no matter what. And okay, that, well then, I mean, that deserves there, respect. Is, and that's what he did. It deserves... That's too, but that's too broad. Why is Noah a fucking? It's not too broad. It's su- not too broad. He fucking he made his own fucking like graphic novel to generate the interest in the film. When Russell Crowe started kicking ass, there wasn't a bit of you that thought, "Wow, this is almost." I don't even care about Christianity, and this is almost offensive. He like they have Noah like kicking ass, not a bit. And, like killing people. I, like he's. I went in this not thinking about Christianity at all. I went into this oh, from the. How did you? How did you not? Think, how, how did you go into <laughs> no, this story? Fuck him! No. It's it's how like this. This 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 is a story. Okay, for for starters, I mean you. Wait, okay, you really... like my closing quote was going to be: "This is a movie you'll enjoy as long as you're not the kind of person who only allows for your own interpretation of a 1700 year old story." Yeah, I didn't think about the seven. I know I yeah. read it and everything, but date? I already started the movie. <laughs> Where'd you get also, that? Also, 1700s <laughs> way off. I mean, way no, off. it's um, not. The Bible was written 400 years after fucking year zero. Gilgamesh refers to this <laughs> to this flood, though, doesn't it? The, the We're getting Torah way off. I, was, I just referred Bible. to the epic of matter. Gilgamesh. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I've it's inspired just, you. We keep, talking, we keep talking about Darren Ar- Aronofsky making the story he wants to make. Dave, even you have to admit, like, young Noah, like, the rest of the people saw young Noah run behind the rocks, and they did. Like, that, there were there were a lot of liberties taken, and I'm not just talking about as oh, a absolutely. There were a lot of, there was a, a lot, lot of, of, like... There was a lot of... He made it a dramatic... Like, he made a dramatic epic. He took liberties with the story. He changed it up for what he wanted to do. Like, he... And the, and the way he, it was shot. They, they saw the kid. They saw okay, the kid he, run away. He treated this like a remake. You're right. I'll give you that, dude. No, I'll totally give you that. And I'll also say that if this came out at that period of time where Cecil B. DeMille and a lot of the others were making Ten Commandments and stuff, I think this would have done really well. So I'm very aware that my cynicism got in the way of my viewing experience. So until I had to, you know, I told, I, I said I kind of watched it earlier when Jeff said it was terrible. I kind of just wanted to see, but I didn't really watch it. I probably would not have seen this movie if it had not been for this podcast. I, I don't want to entertain that subject I mean, matter i don't give a fuck so that may okay, have gotten in look, my way to, and to, maybe you had a better experience possibly of appease you too i'm not going to watch it again um <laughs> but i'm glad i watched it this you time loved be- it love it though no but also I, i'm glad i watched it simply because there were there were a few things i learned like um i mentioned the cinematographer he shot this on ari and super 35 two different film nice. stocks like well, film stock and digital stock. It was again, it was a, a mixed media film. It, it looked cool. But looked like cool. to get around, like I in researching this to get around some of the water reflections, he fucking shot it at four stops instead of two point eight or whatever you know you, that sort of thing. You, you, it's subjective. But he he shot it at four stops, lit to eight with polarizers on the lens to get rid of water reflections. And wow. that is that is like a subtle thing. Like he underexposed everything to bring it all down, so that it kind of all meshed. the The whole battle scene with the the rock monsters and everyone trying to get in the ark, uh, they shot that night for day. It kind of looked like that. I, I had a yeah. feeling. Not that anyone else would notice that, but I had a like hunch they shot yeah. night for day. They put fucking globes up in the yeah. air all and yep. and lit it flat. And they that was the time they used digital. That was the Arri camera. You know well, to praise like, this you know movie. Say, 
because digital. No, they always say that. Like, but when you use digital, it has a it has like a better response in the in the lower ends. So they needed all the bottom end of the like the lower shadows to be clear for the VFX plates for like all the visual effects to come in. So like it was a case of like this like the cinematographer on this was amazing. You know what this sounds like? You know how they always say the best technical advancements in in audio and visual technology comes from porn. I feel like that's what we're talking about right now. <laughs> 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 Dave, this may be one of the times I'm going to harken back to the time in our franchise face-off when my two co-hosts told me to go fuck myself when I argued for Fast and the Furious over Star Wars. This might be one of those moments. No, no, no one might up. be your Fast and the Furious to it. I mean, so I enjoyed, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the film for its creativity. It. Like, I enjoyed it I for its creativity. An old and, it. No one literally did technolog- it. Didn't take like, any of it on the arc. It was also the technological stuff that, like, like I'm not looking at the quantum physics notation of it all, where you know, like the the arc floating with that much mass and shit like that. Like I'm not looking at any of that shit. I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at like the cinematography quantum techniques. Uh, like I, and Judas the fact Theo. that like in researching this, I learned some stuff. Yeah, you didn't learn anything about the story though, because nothing you said did had look, anything to do with the story, and the story is dumb. It did look technically. But like all the other stuff you're talking about, cool. <laughs> I will no, say you, that, all, all um, you're saying is true, except the story's dumb. But everything else you're saying, the acting, the acting is the acting is strong. Jennifer Connelly's accent isn't as I'm not sure what she was doing. Russell Crowe is really great. Okay. Okay. She gave up. She gave up halfway through the shoot. She went. Mm, it sounded like she tried. Halfway through the shoot. Anyway, That's I love Jennifer Jeff. Connelly. I love her. I love her. I love her. She's, bad. Uh, she's great. Russell Crowe was really wonderful. And do you think they even had a second consideration for Methuselah, or were they were like Anthony Hopkins? Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> they, no, like, no, yeah, no, no, they didn't Hopkins. even consider it's, it's gotta, anybody yeah. else. Right? We want Anthony, we want Anthony Hopkins as Yoda. Yes, yes. I think with Tony too. Brilliant. I think it's basically like we're gonna film all your stuff in sequence, so one week and you're done. I don't even think with him they make him sit around. I think they say we're gonna have him on sets. So we'll just shoot all of his shit in a row. I think they do that with every project he does now. Can he you imagine awesome. asking Probably. the acting Hannibal was Lecter? strong, dude? The acting was strong. I didn't mind. Yeah, they made it. Emma Watson it's work the... way too hard because of all that shit they made her go through. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, she was upset. I don't. I don't know, Dave. It was. It was good. You to got see close, her. dude. I, I listened. I enjoyed listening is, to you talk good. about it. Good. Yeah, because I want to hear people who like this movie come at no, me. Just from my I, I do know that I have. From my perspective, I enjoyed this movie. Like I, I <sighs> again, I won't watch it again, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> 